Now the way this sky works is we're going to start by putting in blue and your your horizon line is going to be about a third of the way down on your painting. The first thing we're going to do is put in a couple of blue stripes. Oh, kind of diagonally. And uh, let's see how we do here. So just take your brush and dip it in the blue paint. And you're going to start up at the top corner up here like this and just kind of paint a line down across. And you can make it a little bit wider. So bring it over here and make it just a little bit wider. And you're also gonna have some blue up here in the corner. We'll just leave a little stripe there. We may have to do a couple of coats depending on how your paint is going on to the onto the canvas and then you do a, a thinner stripe right here that mirrors the top one and once you have your your stripe painted your stripes painted on you can take your brush keep keep don't rinse it out keep it with the blue paint on it and add add a little bit of red to get kind of a purpley color oh, okay. And that's going to go right along in here. Oh. And then you can kind of blend the edges just a little bit with the blue that's there. And then you're going to put some more down here along the bottom of this first stripe. Like that. And just kind of Run your brush along the edge so it blends in a little bit. So those are some some dark purple clouds and there was a ping. What does that mean? Is somebody trying to get in? Somebody sending me a message. I don't see anything. So that's basically it for this this part. Just kind of go over it a little bit and blend it. I'm going to redo my blue because it's a little transparent for some reason. There, that's better. Yeah, this one has a lot of color in it and we're going to get the colors just by mixing colors that we have. So. Um, which should be fun. Put a little bit of purple right here on this one. And blend it down into the blue. Now we're going to let that dry for a minute. So while we do, we're going to go ahead and paint some of the ocean in while the sky dries. So keep going with your purpley color and kind of make your horizon line going across. Oh. And keep doing some more purple on down this side a little bit. And it's okay if it has some more red or more blue in it. It doesn't matter because it's the ocean's going to be kind of streaky anyway. So just put it in all the way down to about right here, about uh, an in two inches from the bottom of the canvas. So a little too red. I'm going to add some blue to it. And even make a streak going over there but since the sky is darker up here we're going to try and reflect what the sky is doing so
Then you can take a little bit of white and just kind of brush it in here too like this to get a little bit of a lighter, lighter color in some areas of the water. And if you just do it right on top, don't don't clean your brush or anything, just do it right on top of what you just painted and it'll blend. Oh, wow, it's pretty. We're gonna put a, yeah, we're gonna put a lot more white on it eventually, but right now we're laying down the base. The blue in this and purple in the sky should be getting close to dry. The next color we're going to go in with is a little bit of red, just a little bit. And then we're going to slowly add yellow to it to create the, um, the see, we're going to start, we have a little bit of red going along here like this, and then we're going to slowly add yellow to it to make the sky more orange. Take some red and put it in right underneath this purple right here. But it doesn't matter if it touches the blue because if red touches blue, it's just gonna turn into orange. So that's not a problem. I mean, orange, it's just gonna turn into purple. So that's not a problem. But if yellow touches it, then you got a problem because it'll turn green. And generally speaking, the sky's not green unless there's tornadoes hanging around or something. And then just take your brush and dip it in the yellow, the straight yellow, and run it right down the middle of where you put that red in. You might have to do it a couple of times, but as you do it, I didn't get enough yellow on there, obviously. Same brush? Same brush, yeah, just keep using the same brush and we're just blending away here. And as you spread it up, it's gonna turn into orange in the middle, kind of an orangey color. The more yellow you put, the more golden it's gonna be. Um, or you can have straight yellow, which is kind of pretty. It makes it glow a little bit if you wanna do that. And then go back to the red and just uh, with same brush, so you still have yellow on it, but you're going to start doing this to do your whole sky across like this with red and yellow on your brush at the oh. same time. And you're going to take it all the way across. Try and, try and keep it a little more yellow down toward the horizon because the sun is uh, down there setting. Now, mine's a little red, so I'm going to come back in with yellow in a minute, but I want to use up this paint off my brush. So just keep working on this sky like this, just adding little spots of yellow in it and maybe some white if you want to lighten it up in some areas. You could just add some white like that. 
and that'll that'll help so basically you have some kind of reddish clouds right here under these blue ones blue. and then whoops I got a little blue there but as you'll see that's okay then we just put some yellow in here and make it orange and lighten it up a little bit. So I'm going to add a little white because I think it's a little too intense. And just if you decide to add white, just blend it in and then probably add a little more yellow to it and that'll tone the white down. But your yellow will have more of a chance. Yellow can't really compete with red. So you can stop working on your sky and let it sit for a little while and you can always come back and make adjustments to it after it dries, remember? So I will be doing that too, I'm sure. So now we're gonna take the, uh, the yellow and the orange and the other colors and we're gonna bring them down for the ocean. We'll do the ocean next. So it's, you can see how it looks on the painting. So we have purple on the left-hand side and then we have yellow and orange and red in the, on the other side and paint all the way to the edge. We're gonna put some rocks and some shoreline on top of it, but we'll paint all the way to the edge. So, okay. there you go. Oops, a little oh, too red. red. Little too red, so I'm gonna put some yellow in it. I've got a really strong red right now. There we go. And make sure you don't make a straight line, kind of pull it into it a little bit. Just a little here and there where it goes into the in there like that and this can definitely be streaky because the ocean as you know doesn't um very rarely is one flat color i have seen it that way a couple of times but not very often and it's usually a sign that something not good is about to happen <laughs> There's one time I was in Hawaii and I went over and looked at the, uh, stopped to look at the ocean, one of my favorite beaches, and it looked like an absolutely still lake. I had never seen anything like that. i never seen it like that, even when I was growing up. And I thought, boy, I mean, you could barely even see a ripple. Now I'm putting white in here because I want to extend the, the orange a little bit, and I can't do it right on top of the purple because it'll just turn brown so i'm going to let that dry while i finish the rest of the sky or ocean whatever it is i'm painting and it's going to come down like this and as you mix yellow and orange and, or yellow and red and white you'll get variations of like peachy colors some um, orange colors red some yellow
So I'm just going back and forth on this ocean a little bit to kind of make it look, you know, how ocean has ripples and stuff. If you just take your brush and hold it kind of down like this and go back and forth, you'll get some little variations in color, which are really good. And then once you've got your ocean painted, you need to dry it off. Now you see how I can go in now and put, I can put some orange right on top of where that purple was, where I put, where I put the white on it. Okay. And, it, and it doesn't, uh, the purple doesn't show through. If you don't put the white underneath, then uh, it's possible to cover it with enough layers of orange and stuff, but what happens is it's not very bright. So, the next thing we're going to do is paint the land. And this is going to be mostly black, although I think you could add... Uh, let me think here. I don't like to do straight black if I can help it. So let's add a little bit of blue to it. So you have black. And take your uh, middle size brush. I think that probably worked better for this. Well, no, actually I think the large brush will still work for this. So let's do that. So we're going to take this black and we're gonna add a little bit of blue to it so that it turns it in a little grayer, just a little. We're gonna start our land. Now the land goes, we're gonna start it up here. I'm gonna go, we're gonna paint this peninsula first and then this one in front of it and then this, and then we're gonna come around this way. So to start with, and then go a little bit above your horizon line, like this, with your big brush. And just make a little hill that comes, oh, maybe about halfway across. And then kind of comes down at, an ang at a little angle, like this. And then goes back in. So you can just cover that, paint that. We'll add some details to it with the medium brush later. We're just blocking it in right now. And then another little part comes down like this a little bit, like some rocks. And comes across to the edge. And then you're going to have another one. Now I'm going to put a little bit of white on my brush just so you can see what I'm doing a little better. Then the next one is going to start about right here. Well, that's not enough white. Let me try again. I'm going to start about right here. And it's only going to come part of the way like this. And then it kind of curves around like this on the bottom. Don't make yours gray. I'm just making mine gray so you can see what I'm doing. A little better. And then there's a rock or more peninsula that comes out this way, right here, comes down, and the bottom of it goes in like this, and then kind of curves around, a little bit bumpy, like there's rocks and stuff. Just comes around like this, all the way down, like that. And then you paint all paint all that in. Okay. So let me know when you're when you're done. I don't want to go too fast. Okay. A little bit of uh, black and blue together, and skip this. And then when you're done painting this part, we need to dry it off. Uh -oh. Take your big flat brush. And just hold it kind of sideways like this. Don't hold it up like this. Hold it kind of sideways and just go across your ocean. Dip it in some uh, light, in some yellow or some orange. Make an orange with yellow and orange that's kind of light. You can even add a little bit of white to it. And as you start to go across like this, you start to see some little differences. Let me hold this up. So as you go across, you start to see where some of the color just kind of streaks in. You can streak it a little bit over the purple like that. This is not going to finish it, but it's going get it, to get it going. And 
and you can at the same time reshape any of your mountains that you want to. I'm gonna fix mine. This one is too far down, so I'm gonna paint over it and come around a little better. There we go, that's better. Next thing we're gonna do is put some little bit of a light green gray mossy color on the rocks. And we're gonna mix up a couple of colors. So use your medium brush to do the mixing because it's small and it won't eat up as much paint. So first thing you wanna do is mix a little bit of tiny bit of black with some yellow. You wanna get a light green color. So keep, so just a tiny bit of black and add in yellow until you've got kind of a light, a creamy light yellow color. And then what you're gonna do, still using the medium brush, is just start painting. Now if you still have some black wet up there like I do, I'm gonna ignore that part right now but you're gonna put a little top in on these rocks like this that's in green. So it looks kind of like there's some moss or some grass or something growing on it. Oh. And that's also how you're gonna delineate between the mountains and the background too because you've got, you're gonna put some green on top of them. Now I'm not gonna do that top one because it's still wet. So I'll let it dry while I work on these. Sometimes the biggest the best you can do when you're working with uh, acrylics is just keep moving around your canvas to different areas and let other areas dry. And when you get down here to these rocks in the foreground, basically you wanna like paint in a rock shape. So you can just do a rounded rock right there like that. Don't paint the bottom of it, just paint the top. Then you could do another rock over here like this. Another one back there, these would be a little bit smaller. And as you come down toward the front, just picture in your mind rocks and just, just paint in some big old rocks here. <coughs> leave black though, you wanna leave black because that helps delineate where the rocks are. And you can go along, we're gonna come back in with some blue gray in a minute too, so that'll, that'll also help with the rocks. But you wanna make it look like it's got some kind of you can even take your brush and kind of brush it down a little bit like this. Don't leave the lines totally straight. So if you see what I'm doing here, get this up here. So I put in a rock or put in the top of the rock and then I'm taking my brush and just going down a little bit like this to fade it out a little. Then you can do the other rock over here you can bring it kind of down toward that one. You can do this one over here. Just pull the paint down a little. So it kind of fades out along the bottom, you know, on a straight line. Fade it out up here like this too. And you can, if it looks kind of dark, just take your brush and dip it in the yellow and add a little more yellow to it. So you can make it look a little more yellow. And you can even, if you want to, put your brush in white and add some white to it to change up the green a little bit. Just blend it in while it's still wet. You see how that works? Just just wiggle your brush around on it and then you get more of a detail. So we have a rock over here in the background. And just keep adding rocks. Make them kind of rounded. But you just blend in. So you have kind of a variation of greens on here because unless it's artificial turf, lawns rarely are one, you know, or moss or whatever, then they're rarely one color. So we're gonna do this and we have this rock going up here like this.
and do a rocks all the way down to the bottom so you have um, the idea of rocks just going along here. Don't stack them on top of each other like bricks. You want to make them a little bit uneven. Once you're done putting the green on, then I want you to mix up almost like a lavender color. So you're gonna take some blue and some red. This is like uh, maybe there's some little purple vegetation growing along the, on the, around the rocks. So, and some white. So you want it to be lighter. You can make it a little bluer or a little more reddish, pinkish if you want. However you want to do it. I think I'm going to make mine a little bit bluer. And then you're going to take that color and you're just going to kind of brush it where you didn't put the green, but still don't cover up all the white. So you're going to do this with the lavender and you can brush it over the green here and there. Under the green. Yeah. Yep. And just kind of under the green a little bit it can go up a little bit into the green if you want it to look like it's plants maybe you can kind of blend it up there and you can use your finger or a uh, uh, paper towel or something to kind of blend it a little bit if you want to and it just goes around just is kind of highlighted here and there as you go you go around the rocks the same way you did and you know blend it down a little bit. Blend it into the green a little bit and smooth it out and then just keep going. So it's got a lot, lot of stuff going on here. And when you're done doing that uh, with the rocks, you can put some of this lavender in the ocean as a highlight where the purple part is. And I'm putting a little bit on the far distant mountains that are sticking out too because they're made up of rocks just like this part is and the uh, last uh, spring I was up in Hemet and and the uh, California poppies and the other wildflowers were growing on those mountains and the mountains looked absolutely orange it was so pretty so you can see them from far away you can see the 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 little path of color of course you don't see anything of um, original or uh, detailed about it but you know just kind of brush them in like this a little bit then you can take your brush and still hold it sideways like you did your big one and go like this in your water and you get some lavender in your water which is very pretty and if you press the brush down just a tiny bit when you're holding it sideways like this it almost gives you a wave motion in the ocean you can see how it does that and then as you get further out you don't want to have that distinct wave because it's you don't see it from that distance So now we're going to put in the uh, the white highlights on the water so that we can see where the waves are. It doesn't have to be totally dry for you to do that, and it is going to be basically white. Although if you feel like it later, you can come back in and add some yellow or more red or whatever. Now remember that out toward the back, out toward the horizon, you're just barely going to, so use your medium brush and just barely touch it like this. So you just get little lines out there and just make them, don't make them go all the way across, just make them, chop them up a little bit. As you get further in, you can make them a little bit wider and they could go a little bit further. The one thing you do want to do is make sure that you have white water going along the edge of your land right here because it looks like the waves are washing up on the land. 
So that helps give that illusion that the waves are right there. Coming up and kind of beating on the cliffs a little bit. You can make it come out a little bit from the edge there. Just make sure you hit the bottom of each of your rocky areas. that and then once you've done that then you're going to keep bringing your your white water you can make a little area like this where it kind of eddies there and then it comes across here doesn't have to be perfect you don't want to put too much white water in there or it'll look like the ocean's really rough Now, as you know, what you can do is tomorrow take another look at this painting and see what you want to add to it. And I would love to see what you do because you can, you can compare it to the one that's online. I have that one online for you to look at. And you can see what you, what you want to add to yours or take away from yours or, you know, improve on mine, whatever you want to do. And I'm going to put a... A larger white area here because I think I want to put a little couple of little rocks in there. I'm gonna put the water around them. There we go. <clears throat> you don't need to put any white water around the edge of these rocks down here because the water is actually running up to those but we don't see the front of the rocks where where it faces the water. But you can, you can make some bigger waves here. So look for places in your water where you have kind of a streak already, like a light streak or a dark streak, and match up your waves with some of those streaks because the water will be catching the sunlight at different, uh, different areas. The other thing you can do is um, take a white gel pen, if you have one, and you can draw in little tiny, you can tap in little tiny sparkles in your water with a white gel pen once the paint's totally dry. And that's kind of a fun look sometimes because you can get the, the water looking a little sparkly. And you can see how Adding that white just transforms your ocean into, into an ocean, actually. Add a little swirl there, so I'm going to make it into a wave, like that. And just keep adding lines to it. Now, what we're going to do, since we don't have a whole lot of time left, is I'm going to show you how to paint the lighthouse, because we want to get that in here. You can still use your medium brush, and you should put your lighthouse about right, you know, maybe an inch from the very end of your top mountain there. And just make it go up, straight up like this. I'll hold it up in a minute so you can see it. Just straight white paint. And it might help in this instance to get your brush a teeny tiny bit wet because sometimes that helps the paint flow a little better when you're trying to do something really fine. Okay, so there it is. And I'm going to put the top right there. That and make it a little taller. You can make your lighthouse a short, fat lighthouse if you want or a tall one. But it's a tall rectangle here on top. Then there's a little white line right here where the one house is going to be or building. And then 
a slightly bigger rectangle right here, like that. So that's what it looks like to begin with. While you're, while you're doing that and while it's still wet, you can take a little bit of that blue-gray color that we used for the rocks and add some white to it and get kind of a, get kind of a light, lightish gray color like that. And just go down the side of your lighthouse like this so that you can see where the shadow is. My lighthouse is being a little transparent. I need more white on it, but I'll worry about that later. So that way you have the light. Now, since it is mostly in, I mean, it's in front of the sun, it's not gonna be totally white. It's gonna be more gray with just a little white along the edge here for where the sun is hitting it. And then you put, now this could all be done with a Sharpie pen if you're more comfortable drawing it in with a Sharpie pen. You can put a straight line like this. I probably on my painting drew it in with a Sharpie pen, but my paint's wet right now. Just don't try to do it until your paint's dry. You put a little ledge up there for the walkway and then you put the ledge up here for the roof and it's a triangle. See what I got? Yeah. So it's it's black on, on the lineup. And we have to put yellow in there for the light part of it. Take some yellow and mix it with some white. You get a paler yellow, but um, but it'll cover it because you got white mixed in with it. And then put it in here like this. Now I wouldn't try to put in a lot of the detail on here without using the Sharpie. So like, you see these little windows here and the line on the house, you need to do that with a Sharpie. So when you're getting ready to do that after it's all dried tomorrow, then, or later this evening when it's all dry, then just, um, Look at the picture that's on Facebook and you can see how to draw in the windows and the other stuff. I don't have his bottom very well there. Okay. So then you're going to take some black and do his roof. So this guy has a roof that goes like this. Oh. On there. And over. Comes down. I will post this video because uh, on it'll be on YouTube, but um, I'll let you know when it's posted in case you want to go back over anything. And also it gives Nancy a chance to paint it if she wants to. And uh, Janelle and Kathy too. They want to try it. Now we gotta do the bushes and then we're done. And like I said, you can go in and just take your Sharpie pen, and this paint's wet, so it might not work too well, but just take your Sharpie pen and do your little windows right there, like that. You can make them square. You can do a finer pen if you, if you have. And you can... You can straighten out the straighten out your little roof there. So we're gonna use black and red with them, I think, and see if we can. So take some black and a little bit of red and mix it with that black. And you're gonna get uh, kind of a little bit of a brownish color. It's a little purpley browny. I'm gonna put a tiny speck of yellow in it, but you don't have to, you can just use it the way it is because since we have so much purple in the picture anyway, that's fine. And we're just gonna put these stems in here randomly. Now, I just use, I'm using my medium brush and I'm just doing them up and down. I mean, up and down. I'm doing, I'm holding the brush straight up and down and I'm just going like this. Make a branch. And make another branch. Oy, I'm wobbly. Don't worry about it. if you wobble, you can cover it up with a 
one of those little things that are on the top of the branches. So just make a bunch of them. Make a bunch of them right here. They can be coming up behind this rock right here if you want them to. Just kind of go behind those two rocks. They found some dirt to grow in or something. And okay, just bring them up. You can put in as many as you like or you know, as few as you like, but I think it looks better with quite a few. Make them different heights. Once you get a whole bunch of these in here, however many you want to put in, the way that you do the top part of them is you just take this brush the way it is, or if you have a rougher brush, you can do a rougher brush, but and just do this. Press, lift, press, Oops. lift. Whoops, press, lift. I didn't do that one right. But it's just a press, lift kind of thing. So you press it down and lift it up like that. Press it down, just lift it up. And that makes the little um, reeds or the whatever they are, cattails or whatever's on top of here. And you can make some of them bigger, some of them smaller, but it's always that press, press down and lift up motion. It's the same way we do grass, except we're doing it on, a, on branches here. So you can do it sideways like this, or you can do it the flat way with your brush flat. You don't need a lot of paint on your brush to do it. So, and don't worry if it's transparent, because it would be transparent anyway. You know, uh, in nature it would be transparent. So just do that. And then you do all that, and then you're done. Except for doing the detail work on your lighthouse. Your lighthouse is probably the only thing that needs detail work on it, unless you want to tap in some. I was looking to see if I had my white gel pen. Oh, yeah, here it is for my white pen. Here you go. Cool. So if you want to do um, sparkles on your ocean, you would just do this. Wherever you want to put it in the ocean. And also you can draw some really thin lines if you wanted to have a really thin white line out here like this. You could draw it with your white pen. So that's why I tell you to have a white pen and a Sharpie handy because it's really a big help with the detail and stuff. So okay. let, let's finish up this part. You know, if you don't feel like that's as many as you want, then you just go back in and add some more. I didn't put nearly as many in this one as I did in the first painting, so this one needs to have some more. <laughs> 